What is going on there, YouTube? And welcome back to another comic book video. This is the channel where we sit down and cover different comic book stories from different comic book companies. Today, we're going to jump over to Marvel Comics because we are going to continue to work on our X-Men Reading Order playlist. This time, we're going to cover the two-part storyline that takes place in X-Men number 94 and X-Men number 95. These two books are also known as the story where we see the death of Thunderbird in Marvel Comics. So if you like today's comic book video, please leave me a like down below and also subscribe to the channel for more content to come in the near future. Also, any suggestions on books I should read, please let me know in the comments below because you never know, your suggestion could be a future video down the road. But I do hope you enjoy today's video. So with this two-part storyline, this is where you have Charles Xavier welcome back both the old and the new X-Men back to the X-Mansion. Now Chris Claremont tells us that this is the moment that is going to break the heart of Charles Xavier. Well, not at first, because you have Sunfire leave because he hates helping other mutants. This is again, not the moment that breaks Charles Xavier's heart. It actually comes after Charles Xavier asks Banshee to stay with the X-Men, even though the X-Men is supposed to be a team of youngsters learning from Charles Xavier, and Banshee is pretty old, but he decides to join the team. Except after that, you had the old X-Men tell Charles Xavier that they had decided to leave the X-Men. And they are leaving with the fact that they have been recruited back when they were young, but now they are old. It is time for them to leave. So Iceman, Jean Grey, Angel, Havoc, and Polaris leave. The question though, will Cyclops leave since he was Charles Xavier's first X-Men, but also he is the only one of the old X-Men who would have a hard time hiding his powers. But after the announcement of the old X-Men leaving, of course you have Cyclops tell everyone that he is going to stay with the new X-Men and say goodbye to Jean Grey in the old X-Men. Right after that though, you had Cyclops showing the new X-Men what it means to be an X-Men, which of course means showing them the danger room, the place where the X-Men train in, where we learn that with them being inside the danger room, they stay in there for days that turn into weeks. But this leads to Thunderbird getting hurt, and Cyclops goes to check up on him where Thunderbirds yells at Cyclops because this plays into the character of Thunderbird. Thunderbird hates Caucasian people because of what happened between the Native Americans and Caucasian Americans throughout time. Also, he is trying to prove that he is a strong man, but the argument between the two characters is stopped by Charles Xavier himself. We then switch over to Colorado, really to the Rocky Mountains, because inside the mountain, there is a military base known as NORAD that is holding on to a lot of different military bombs, except we see that one of the guys gets a package with a box saying, push me. Of course, this guy presses it, and we see that it opens a portal to the Animen, you are probably wondering what in the world is the Animan. I will tell you in a minute. But the portal also opens a path for Count Nefera to join as well. These guys quickly take over the mountain base and are planning to use the bombs for an evil scheme. The Animan are a group of characters who appeared in multiple other heroes comics just a bunch of characters hired to do evil things for someone else. But at first, they were just men dressed in animal outfits. But Count Nefera points out that he had a scientist make them more animal-like and less human-like. Count Nefera at this point was an Avenger and an X-Men villain. He was this guy who comes from a family who had money. Also a man who achieved a great level of success at a young age, but always wanted more. 
which of course led to him making a criminal organization, but also had scientists make high levels of weapons to help him achieve his evil plots. This is a quick rundown on the character at this point in Marvel Comics. Getting back to the story, we pick up with the X-Men, where you have Cyclops thinking about what happened with Thunderbird earlier. Nightcrawler does come in and was about to confront Cyclops about what was on his mind until Charles Xavier calls them to the briefing room. The reason why is because word got out to the whole world about Count Nefera having taken over the NORAD base. Beast, who used to be an X-Men, but at this point was an Avenger, tells the X-Men that the Avengers can't go because they are busy. And so the X-Men agree, but again, you have Thunderbird showing his rude side towards Cyclops. Since Cyclops wanted to sideline Thunderbird, but Thunderbird says no, he is going, and Charles Xavier says let him go. This leads into the X-Men getting on the X-Jet and deciding to go after Count Nefera to stop him because he has put the whole world on ransom, telling each country to pay a hefty amount of money or he will use the bombs in the base to blow up the world. And so the X-Men leave and they get a pass from the military to continue on only to be shot out of the sky by Count Nefera using a missile. Now the X-Men were lucky that they had a second jet hiding inside the first one to help them continue on, except Count Nefera shot that one out of the sky too, and now the X-Men are falling to their death. Now of course, the X-Men are not going to fall to their death. It was just a way for Chris Claremont to have a little cliffhanger. Because right after their second jet disappeared, you had the X-Men find different ways to save themselves from falling to their death. Honestly, this was kind of obvious to see. But with the X-Men landing safely, it is time for them to continue on with their mission. Which you have Cyclops tell Nightcrawler to teleport inside the base and open up a hatch that will let all of the X-Men be able to get inside as well. Except when he gets inside the base, he is confronted by Frogman, which gives us the first time to see what Nightcrawler can do by himself in a one-on-one -on -one battle, where Frogman is easily defeated by Nightcrawler. After beating him, you have Nightcrawler go and open up the hatch for the rest of the X-Men to get inside. Except with him doing that, Frogman was able to wake up and escape while Nightcrawler was helping the other X-Men out. Once the X-Men are inside the base, of course they face another challenge, which is that Count Nefera turned on some kind of gas the base had for defense against enemies to kill them. Would the X-Men just break into another tunnel with no gas, but are greeted by soldiers who are just trying to get everything in order? To them means to take down the X-Men, any men, and Count Nefera as well. But Storm uses her powers to create a whirlwind to push them away, but to also not badly hurt them since they are innocent. Once they are able to continue on with getting deeper into the mountain to find Count Nefera, they of course run into the Anyman once again. But this time, the Anyman were able to take down both Banshee and Thunderbird, which leads the rest of the X-Men to handle them. So we get a few pages of the four of them fighting against each other, but the fight ends with of course the X-Men coming out on top of the battle. After their battle with the Anti-Man, Cyclops ordered the X-Men to leave, Thunderbird and Banshee behind so they can stop Count Nefera in time. But they come to find out that Count Nefera has set the place to explode, except Thunderbird and Banshee wake up, but the room they walk into, they see Count Nefera trying to escape. Now Banshee has the ability to stop Count Nefera from leaving on the jet if he uses his sonic scream, but Thunderbird had jumped on the plane. Of course, this leads into the death of Thunderbird. 
Because while the other X-Men are trying to shut down this self-destruct sequence, you have Charles Xavier tell Cyclops to forget about it because it's going to be okay. What is more important is that Thunderbird is on a jet and with Thunderbird attacking it, the jet's about to crash. But when the other X-Men get outside where Thunderbird, Banshee, and Count Nefera are at, they come to see the very end of the battle, where the jet crashes and we learn that Thunderbird did not jump off in time and had died. That is how the X-Men Thunderbird died. And this is where we are going to end today's video. So please hit that like button down below and also subscribe to the channel for more content to come in the near future. Also, any suggestions on books I should read? Well, please let me know in the comments below because you never know, your suggestion could be a future video down the road. But guys, I'll see y'all next time. Later.